Hi, David Campanile here, owner of Campanile Law, located in the state of New Jersey. We handle estate planning and probate. Today's topic is about how to pick a trustee. But before we dive into that, if you have any questions or concerns, comments about estate planning or probate, please do not hesitate to contact me at njestateattorney.com. You can send me an email directly at david at campanilelaw.com or if you're on LinkedIn, it's up here. And if you're on YouTube, it's down here. There's a direct link to schedule with me um, and you can pick your date and time and schedule directly. So let's just jump in. How to pick a trustee. So when we are appointing a trustee, there are two avenues that we can go basically. There's one which is more of the uh, personal touch and there's one that's more of a, um, I'll say, we'll call it banking avenue. So let's start off with avenue one, which is a personal avenue. This is picking someone you know. <clears throat> now, anybody can be a trustee and I'm talking about appointing a trustee for a revocable uh, living trust and maybe uh, for an irrevocable living uh, trust as well. But there are basic qualities that we look for in an individual to be a trustee. We're, you're looking for someone that has the basic qualities of a person with uh, uh, that you're okay with putting in charge of money. They're trustworthy, responsible, and organized. Um, you're not looking to appoint the crazy lady. I don't know if we all remember the episode of the Simpsons. There was always a uh, grandpa Simpson yelling at the sky or someone we're avoiding all the crazy people. Um, so that's going to eliminate those people. The other thing is we want to make sure there's no, that we don't, uh, you don't appoint someone that has bad money habits. And by that, I mean, gambling, drugs, or alcohol. Um, some, uh, even a relative could be a trustee for you. Um, there are some perks of also, uh, when there is a family connection, usually the trustee is in charge of distributing the, the assets to the beneficiaries. So there is that kind of like personal touch at the end, um, where, you know, the kids, usually it's your children, but, or if it's the grandchildren know that individual. So there's like a level of comfortability with that person when for the distribution, um, the other perk of having a, someone, you know, is it's going to cost less. Um, however, they are going to provide a lower service in general, as they may not be as up to date in the financial field as let's say a banking institution or a private trustee co company. Um, normally a private trustee that you've named this way, will keep just like a quick little timesheet of expenses and, um, how they've spent their time and that's how they'll get paid on that. So you are saving a lot of money on that side. Now, if you go to Avenue two, which would be more of like a banking or private trust company, there are some good things and bad. there, there are drawbacks, uh, and very good things as well. So, um, the banking institutions do have trust wings of their, of the banks. Um, so, and you, uh, they do follow the trust. They, um, they will, uh, protect the trust. They'll protect the assets and everything. But the downside is even though they're, they're very good at their fiduciary responsibility, they tend to only want to use their bank products. Uh, sometimes they do want to force the use of certain products that, um, which could have higher fees for them. So it's just something you want to look into um, before naming them. They tend to shade towards their own bank products. So just watch out. Um, they do have to follow the trust distributions and you're going to have protected property uh, and they're going to protect the property. There are also private trustee services. Now you can just run a simple Google search on a uh, private trustee companies. Um, the thing about private trustee companies is, is the same thing as a bank, really. They're going to follow the rules of the trust. They're going to do your distributions according to the trust. They're going to protect any of the property. Um, so all good things. They're also going to offer probably like that higher level of service than a private person can, can provide. Um, and sometimes your own financial advisor can do the can do this for you. So it's somebody you already have a relationship with. The thing about appointing one of these private trustee services is um, 
they do get paid on an annual basis. It's usually on a percentage of the assets that are in the trust, usually about 1%. Um, however, they are on a sliding scale. So the higher your assets are in the trust, the lower their fees become. So the lower percentages they're taking. Um, just some things to really uh, think about when you are naming a trustee um, and how to pick a trustee. I hope you found this topic informative. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit the like button. Please share this out uh, with people. Maybe you know somebody who's having an issue of picking a trustee. Maybe uh, you are a trustee and you found this video helpful. Uh, so um, if you'd like to uh, discuss this topic or any other topic in estate planning or probate, please contact me at njestateattorney.com. You can email me directly at david at campaneolaw.com or schedule directly on my calendar. There should be a link either below or above where you can go directly and pick your time and date that you want to speak directly to me. As always, I'm David Campanile, owner of Campanile Law, located in the state of New Jersey. We handle estate planning and probate.